I am standing outside an abandoned house that's fallen into disrepair and I'm in the middle of an 1863 gold mining boom town that's a former capital of the state of Montana. Yes, this is Virginia City, Montana. So a little bit change from our Yellowstone content. We decided to come to Virginia City and Nevada City today instead of spending a third day in the park. And we're checking out this place that has been a National Registered Historic District since 1961. We'll be starting our tour here at the intersection of Van Buren and Idaho, right across the road from the main visitor's parking lot here in downtown Virginia City. So initial impression is it reminds me a lot of Oatman, Arizona, just without the wild burrows, or feral bureau, burrows to be more specific. So from what I read online, the population in 2020 was around 200 people, and more than half of the 300 some buildings in town predate 1900. And it's an interesting mix. You have some active businesses that are doing quite well with the tourism industry. And then you have buildings like this that are set up more as a museum. I mean, this is pretty cool. This looks and feels and smells actually when you're in here like something straight out of the 1800s. Home of Montana's first newspaper. Oh yeah, that thing is haunted, I have no doubt about it. And you know, one of our rooms, wherever possible, check out the bottom floor and the top floor. Now it's funny because I don't really think I'm sensitive to anything paranormal, but being down here in the basement of this place, I've just got a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. It's very, very strange. Sorry about the reflection. Quite the collection. Mm -hmm. 
So it says display. Let's go down and see what they're displaying. Can't get in too far. This is the building that we're in. We're in this section of it here. I showed you this one up here before we went inside. I think it said it was built in 1863, the log portion anyway. Put the camera up to the glass so you can get a good look inside. A little wider view there. In like every building in town is listed on the National Register of Historic Places or is part of this district. They've all got these signs. And there's your classic western false fronted building made to make the buildings look bigger and thus more prosperous from the streets. Amazing how little things change. Photo from 1875. Pan across. Other than the vehicles in front, building looks exactly the same today. In this section here, talking about Fort Benton and how important it was for transportation, Fort Benton was also one end of the old McLeod Trail that would run up through into Canada and Alberta all the way to Calgary. Calgary still has the main road, or one of the main roads, named McLeod Trail, and in certain places on the prairie you can still see the wagon tracks. This building was open. It's very dark in here. There's a sign by the entrance that called it the Weston Hotel, I think it was and how they're working on preservation. So, took the opportunity to duck in here and check it out. Check out this old flooring. And you can see the log structure. Maybe if I can get through the reflection, you can see the old log structure inside there. Back over here. You saw the kitchen in the back. This looks like it was an eating area with the old wood stove. And then we can emerge back into the daylight. And yes, the Weston Hotel. And here you can see the clapboard structure on the outside. In this section here you can see the actual log construction on the inside. And if not for the modern picnic table, this would be a scene straight out of the 1880s. This one's for you, Frank. Rocky Mountain Bell Telephone Company building. <laughs> and I didn't see her at first when I walked in because I was looking through the camera, but she made me jump a little bit. He did not for some reason. The Dance and Stewart store. For those who want to dance with someone named Stewart, I guess. Old post office. You can see the little entrance area there. And your typical general store from the era. I always find it funny when people complain about self-checkout nowadays. They're probably the same people that complained 
when this style of store went out of fashion and you had to go pick up your own groceries and walk down the aisles yourself. Because back in this era, you basically would go up to the proprietor behind the counter, tell them what you wanted, give them your list. They would pick it off the shelves, bag it up and give it to you, and then you'd pay or sign for it or do whatever you did. But, you know, the modern supermarket is really the early version of self-serve checkout. And quickly, before I leave and try and catch up with the rest of the group, can we just take a moment to admire that pressed tin ceiling? Livery stable now appears to be acting as a theater. I think every blacksmith shop looks like that inside. Yeah. So here you go, Frank. This is another one for you if you're watching. The old forge and blacksmith shop. Inside. Appears to be a little bar but with a shoe store display. Pretty quiet place right now. Not sure where all the tourists disappeared to. general store and mercantile the assay office or assay office I think it's assay office where miners would bring their gold for assessment here we go another store this one dating or the building from 1893 the building served a number of different functions over its life. Did I say 1893? 1863. I don't remember what I said. So now we've moved about a mile and a half down the road to Virginia City. No, sorry, we were already in Virginia City. This is Nevada City, Montana. First place we're gonna visit here is apparently the old jailhouse. Dentist's office there in the back. A little parlor here in the front. And again, it's very weird. I got the same little just weird feeling in my chest that I had in the basement of the museum back in Virginia City. I got that same feeling as soon as I stepped through the door into this building. And here, Nevada City Hotel, and in the back, the Double Decker Outhouse. Very similar to the one that uh, was recreated in Heritage Park in Calgary. That is from, don't tell me, Lundbrick, Alberta.
So here we go, the Alder Gulch Railroad. A little bit of a display here. Previously, the site of the Nevada City Roundhouse. Burned down in 1991. Bunch of old box cars here. No trucks on them anymore, so likely used for storage. Some great old derelict looking rolling stock down there. Wow, check out this stuff that we uh, came just on the other side of the tracks here and stumbled across. Wow. These are fantastic. Oh my God, look at that. That is gorgeous. Okay, this back here, this is my happy place. Train station, rolling stock, derelict fence, there's birds. Oh my God, this is awesome. It's like, whoops, somehow we ended up on the wrong side of this barrier. So we're just gonna quickly get back onto the legal side of things. Yeah, just please wait here for the conductor. We didn't, didn't break any rules that we know of other than not waiting here for the conductor. Wow. Just wow. The next, the daughters of Joseph Solomon, the saddler, was deceased by that time. And instead of going to the horse sale, he went to the uh, old saddle shop where these daughters showed him through. He got so interested that he forgot about the horse sale altogether. And the daughters were so impressed by him that they gave him their father's saddle shop. Okay, well, my phone battery died, so I did not get a chance to record a proper conclusion to the video that I was making yesterday. It's 5.30 in the morning. We are just pulling out of the uh, KOA here in West Yellowstone and getting ready to head on the road. I don't think I'm going to make any sort of a video of today's trip since it's going to be almost pure windshield time. So, final thoughts or thoughts on? It was a great time. Uh, really good to see my family. We packed a lot in few days, but uh, yeah, time to hit the road. All right. <laughs>